Hi everyone, I'm Corey Shields, amateur radio call sign KB9JHU, and I'm here today to tell you about SatNOPS. Um, just a brief introduction to my, for myself, I am a volunteer contributor for the SatNOPS project and uh, a couple of other various Libre Space Foundation projects. I help out a little bit with uh, development on the software side, websites, as well as uh, some of the ground station developments, and as you can see my ground station uh, right here. Uh, but this is not about me, it's about the project. Let's uh, jump right into what SatNOPS is and uh, what we can do for your CubeSat missions. So what is SatNOPS? Uh, it is a group of projects and a global community of contributors that are working to improve the collection of data that's coming down from uh, satellites all over, most notably uh, small sats and cube sats that are operating in the amateur radio spectrum with amateur radio ideals and, and under amateur radio rules. There are a couple of exceptions to that with uh, weather satellites and the like, but uh, the focus is mostly in those, those amateur radio spectrums. Um, we also have some projects that work to drive the cost of operating a ground station lower through open hardware projects, as well as uh, driving the cost of space. Um, to be lower through open hardware projects as well. Um, SatNOBS is driven by a team of volunteers around the globe and, and backed by the Libre Space Foundation, which you can find on the web at libre.space. Uh, we're driven by the open exchange of data about satellites, data from satellites, and uh, contributing to just the, the development and the free sharing of information of, of satellites and making space more accessible to everyone around the globe. Uh, we welcome CubeSat operators, uh, those of you participating in this, this conference, to work with us as a ground station resource, as well as to provide your ground stations as resources on our network. And in return, we expect similar transparency and knowledge sharing from uh, satellite operators to to help everyone else out there developing technologies for space to, to do so in, in a more collaborative way and, and to do things, uh, things better and stop making the same mistakes um, that others have made in the past. So uh, what I want to do in this presentation is to take you through the, the path that uh, some data will take from a satellite through our various services in the SatNOPS project and how they become a useful dashboard in the end of that process. All right, so let's take a look at the path of data from uh, CubeSat in orbit today through the entire SatNOPS ecosystem. Um, so CubeSats are everywhere. This is preaching to the choir in this, this audience, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about CubeSats here. But the data coming down from CubeSats in a radio frequency form has to be received and processed uh, accordingly. So uh, typically this is done by ground stations with azimuth elevation rotor systems and high gain antennas. Although our system is completely modular, the client is, is designed to be used in any kind of uh, radio receiving environment that, uh, that works best for this kind of uh, signal and this kind of data. So from here, the, the data comes down off of off the antennas into a simple SDR device, a software defined radio. Uh, our client supports almost any software defined radio device out there today, uh, with a few exceptions. And this ranges from you know, the very inexpensive RTL SDR uh, to the much higher end models. From there, it goes to a, a Raspberry Pi, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the. Uh, uh, the client here, the, the Raspberry Pi, runs a, an image that, that we generate. It makes it easy to install and easy to set up and configure. Um, from that image, uh, the radio reception and demodulation decoding process is handled by a bunch of GNU radio scripts. And with these scripts, we also manage the, uh, the constant correction of the Doppler signal uh, of the downlinks uh, data and, and signals that are coming down from, from CubeSats. Um, so what, uh, what comes out from an observation are a number of artifacts, uh, most notably a, uh, a waterfall image of the actual radio frequency during the observation, as well as any data that was uh, decoded or, or created through uh, 
this process, uh, be it uh, an image or a telemetry data frame, for instance. Um, and then we also have a, a compressed audio file of the observation of the actual radio signal that was demodulated. Um, so all of that stuff, all of those artifacts from an observation gets uh, collected on the Raspberry Pi and then uh, sent up to our cloud services. And we have a number of websites that uh, each perform a, a different function across the, the SatMogs ecosystem. And the first stop for these packets will be the, uh, the SatMogs network. And the SatMogs network is our command and control center, if you will, for all of the ground stations that are participating in the network. So the command control for all of these, um, these Raspberry Pis that are, uh, that are contributing to the, the system. Um, we're going to take a moment to, to dive a little bit further into, into this, uh, this website with uh, some examples. Okay, so here we have the SatMox network. Immediately you can see uh, locations of, of all of the active ground stations on the network today that are contributing data back into the network. Uh, but I'm going to focus on uh, the ground station you saw earlier in uh, my ground station here. And I'm going to run this past predictions because it's going to take a, a minute to run. Um, but from here, you can see details about the ground station, what antennas I have configured, which map to different frequencies that are going to be capable of receiving, um, as well as a link to all of the observations in the past and, and a log. Um, and here we see future observation opportunities, some of which are going to overlap with existing scheduled observations. We try to keep ground stations busy, um, but it's all configurable based on how much you want a ground station to be used. Um, and what uh, priorities are. But if we go down here, we can see some that are able to be scheduled. And if I wanted to hit this button here, uh, we'd go into a scheduling view where we could select the transmitter we want to receive and then schedule that observation. Once the observation is scheduled, we can go into an observations view. And this is a bit of a fire hose. We have uh, all of the observations listed here, and they're going to come in different statuses. So, First, we have future observations. We're going to deselect those um, because they haven't happened yet, um, as well as some of these other failing observations, and then take a look at, at some of the observations that, uh, that we have here. And you can see different satellites, uh, different observations, um, different stations that are picked up, as well as any uh, artifacts that come back from these. Let me take a look at one here. And what you get is a waterfall view of the RF that came down from that ground station, uh, that came down from the satellite as observed by the ground station. And any uh, the audio of the RF is also, uh, the demodulated RF is also uploaded. You can play it in the browser or download the audio file, as well as any data that was successfully decoded for that satellite, you'll see here. If there happens to be any ASCII in that data, you can view it here, but uh, that's not the case here. Observations could also be scheduled for a wide uh, range of ground stations based on a single satellite view in a time frame. So let's take the ISS, for example, here. Everyone likes uh, APRS through the ISS. So uh, let's take a look at what that might look like in uh, the near future for an hour, and here we see uh, just a couple of ground stations are going to pass over that time period, and this would allow us to schedule both of those at the same time uh, for the, the ISS and for that transmitter. Um, there's a lot more to this, but that's a brief overview of the SatNogs network, and let's get back to the rest of the pieces. Okay, from here, the data goes from the network into our database, uh, the SatMogs DB. Uh, the SatMogs DB performs a few different functions for, for satellites, uh, first being a, an information repository about satellites, uh, be it mission information or um, uh, frequency information, modes, what have you, as well as the data that is being collected from the, the network and from other contributors is all collected here. So let's take a look at the, the DB with a few examples. Okay, here in the SatMogs database, or SatMogs DB, as we like to call it, uh, is our source of truth for all things satellite information related, uh, transmitters, frequencies, as well as the, the endpoint for all of the data that's collected. 
Uh, as you can see, over the last 24 hours, we've got uh, a lot of contributors contributing a lot of data across multiple satellites here. But uh, let's go over just a little bit of the functionality here by uh, searching for ISS. And here we've got the ISS here. Some mission information, description, as well as a map of where the ISS currently is in orbit and uh, transmitter data uh, on the downlink frequencies, as well as uplinks and uh, transceivers, transponders, and the like. Um, again, this is a crowdsourced platform. Uh, people who have an account are free to go in and uh, edit and help us improve this data. And this gives a brief overview of some of the data collected and who some of the recent observers were for this satellite as well. Um, a very brief overview of the, the data frames that were decoded, and we will show you what those decoded data frames look like uh, here in a second when we get to the dash, uh, SatNox dashboard. Ultimately, we collect data from both the, the SatNox network and third-party uh, clients that are configured to send data to uh, SatNoxDB. And SatNoxDB will, will collect data from all sources and sort them out all the same. And within the DB, we have uh, decoders for some satellites. Um, we would like to have decoders for all satellites to be able to take those raw telemetry frames and decode them into usable data uh, about the satellite and, and about the, uh, the telemetry that's being downlinked. Uh, for the satellites that we do have telemetry decoders written for, uh, the data itself ends up into a time series database that uh, that we have with a front-end dashboard called the uh, SatNox dashboard. Um, and what this is, uh, for those of you in, in uh, the tech industry and are familiar with Grafana, this is a, a Grafana instance uh, with a time series database behind it uh, with all of the data that's being decoded and collected about all of the CubeSats and satellites that are in our system. Um, and like with all projects in SatNox, this is a, a crowdsourced effort. So we, we invite any users to, to come in and create an account and start building dashboards uh, of all of the existing data that we have in, in this time series database, as well as uh, owners and creators of, uh, of satellites that uh, we work to, to receive. They may want to come in and, and design some dashboards of their own. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of examples of, of these dashboards in uh, the SatNox dashboard service. So here's the SatNox dashboard at dashboard.satnox.org. This is where the final decoded telemetry frames end up in a time series database. I'm gonna pick one uh, satellite dashboard here to show real quick, because we are running out of time, and you can see multiple uh, data points that have come down from the telemetry of the satellite. And this is also dynamic in time frame if we wanted to zoom out to the last uh, 30 days, for example. It's just one click away and we can take a look at things from that perspective, as well as uh, zooming in if we want. There's obviously something here and it's one click away from zooming. Um, and that's a quick view of the dashboard. This is all dynamic and you can go in and create your own dashboards today. So that's my time. Uh, there's a lot involved with this project as well as the other projects in the Libre Space Foundation. Uh, I have a lot of links right here you can use to find out more. Uh, we have a very active web forum, which I've uh, linked up there, as well as a couple of chat rooms on the Matrix uh, chat system. Um, a lot of satellite enthusiasts. We welcome anybody and everybody to, uh, to join us. We always need more ground stations in our network to help improve the, the coverage that we can provide for CubeSats, uh, as well as developers and any other contributors. Um, our development frameworks are all on the GitLab uh, Git uh, hosting service, and our programming languages are typically Python, some GNU Radio, uh, Kaitai structs for our decoders, and a few other things. Um, Check out these links, and if you have any more questions that don't get answered in the conference, you can hit me on my email address right there. I thank you for your time.